So here's Dinesh at a university explaining away Marxism and socialism and why it is bad. Here in Palo Alto, there's a Ritz Carlton, there's a Weston. Now imagine a guy who is a valet parking cars at the Ritz Carlton here in Palo Alto. And this guy is paid, let's say, $15 an hour. And let's say that he works 10 hours a day, so he makes 150 bucks. And this guy is now thinking to myself, in those 10 hours, how many cars did I park? Well, I parked, let's say, 100 cars. And how much does the Ritz-Carlton charge for someone to park their car? $30. So how much should the Ritz-Carlton make as a result of me parking those 100 cars? $3,000. And how much was I paid out of that $3,000? $150. 3,000-150 $3, gives $2,850. Who gets that? So from the valet's point of view, this is a very unjust system because I'm doing the work and some other guy is taking the cash. And this argument about the injustice of capitalism is actually anchored in, I think, uh, a rather interesting argument that was made by Marx himself. And so there's a big difference between the revenue generated by the sales and the cost. And that difference Marx calls surplus value. We call it profit. And Marx's question, uh, quite a profound question, who gets that? Now Marx's assumption is that that belongs 100% to labor. Why? Because labor made the goods. The capitalists supplied nothing more than the money, which has already been recompensed through interest. My view is that this description, convincing as it is on first glance, is a completely false representation of how businesses actually run. Consider for a moment the capitalist. In America today, the vast majority of capitalists supply a lot of things, but the one thing they do not supply is capital. Did Steve Jobs actually put up all the capital for Apple? No, he went to a bank. The bank supplied the capital. And this is true of Gates and all, everyone down the list. The bottom line of it, the capitalist supplies three things that Marx completely ignores that are actually of far greater value than capital and actually entitle the capitalist to a share of the profit, but Marx, in a sense, submerges these three factors completely. First, the capitalist has the idea for the business. Without the idea, there's no business. Labor doesn't think of the idea, the capitalist does. It's his or her idea, they do it. Second, the capitalist organizes the business. Here you have this valet, he goes, I parked the cars, I need all the money. The truth of it is the reason you're getting $30 to park a car is you're at the Ritz-Carlton. Somebody built the Ritz-Carlton, somebody thought of it, somebody paid all the capital costs, somebody took out the insurance. You didn't think of that. If you come to my house and want to park my car, I'll pay you 50 cents. <laughs> so the reason that you're getting $30 is not because of you, it's not your labor that's worth $30, it's the resort that's worth $30. And you didn't create that. So the capitalist has the idea for it, he organizes it, and third, he takes all the risk. Very important factor. The capitalist gets paid at the end. If the business has a bad quarter, Steve Jobs can't go, or the current Tim Cook can't go to Apple and say, sorry guys, I'm not gonna pay you for six months. It's looking bad for us this half of the year. No, he has to pay them anyway. So labor is trading a fixed wage for security. But the entrepreneur is taking the risk that he might get nothing out of it and he could even lose money. So the truth of the matter is that in fairly assessing the just rewards of capitalism, you have to match what the entrepreneur actually contributes. And to say it's just capital, it seems to me, is a gross misunderstanding how business is actually conducted in the United States and all around the world. Dinesh, once again, does a great job. And this is exactly what I tell people when they start to complain about, um, well, they're not getting any of the profits from that company. And I say, well, why don't you start that business that you're working at? So example, the, 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 the guy, the valet guy, why doesn't he go out and start a hotel and then uh, take all his risk, take his money, start that hotel and then hire his own valets and then he can take all the profits. 
See, that's what people don't understand is they think that, oh, I put my labor in, I should get all the profits. But yet I didn't put any capital up. I didn't put any of my own money. I didn't think of the idea. I didn't put any risk into that. I didn't uh, you know, put any business uh, insurance into this. I didn't create the, the, the corporation. None of that is it's created by the person that works their nine to five job. But yet the nine to five job person um, needs to get their paycheck. They um, work their labor to have that security. Uh, it's a perfect example during COVID. When, when COVID was going on, the government said, okay, all businesses have to shut down. But yet these businesses still had to pay their employees, even though there was no money coming in. You think about it, no money coming in, there's no restaurants open, but yet those employees still want to get paid. So at that time, I guarantee a lot of them weren't really uh, pounding their you know, head against the sand about being socialist and socialism is great because they wanted to get their paycheck. But what did a lot of those businesses do? They went out and got loans from the government in order to pay their employees. Okay, they had to take the risk. They had to figure that out. And I always say to people, if you're, if you're complaining about your nine to five, then you start that business and you create that business. And then you, if you want to give 100% of your profits to your labor, then do it. But you won't be in business very long. And that's where business owners and that's where entrepreneurs, they take the risk, they put the money in, and they get to keep the profits as a reward for their risk taking. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it goes back to people that work nine to five, go start that business. And then if you want to, you can take all the profits, put them back into your own employees, and then they're happy, you're happy. And then you have a socialist system, which is not going to work because that's not how businesses are going to be run uh, or even businesses are going to be profitable in the future.